Have you ever wanted to put a snorkel on a 4th Gen V8 4Runner? Hi everybody, I'm Rob and this is Stormcrow Overland. We talk about going on adventures, road tripping, camping, and just generally getting out and enjoying life. And on this week's episode, something exciting has happened. I got a snorkel. Uh, in fact, I've got a uh, Dobinson snorkel designed for the 4th Gen V8 4Runner. I know a lot of guys that have the 4th Gens uh, kind of get the eBay special um, snorkels that fit like the Land Cruiser 80 series or 100 series, um, but I really wanted to make sure I got the right one. Uh, I'm doing this kind of as insurance for my ride, so I want to make sure I got the, the best one that fit right and all that fun stuff. Uh, so yeah, got this, ordered it from uh, Oki Overland. They had it, it was, it was back ordered for like two weeks, but they uh, ended up shipping it straight to my house. Uh, in fact... If you guys are looking for stuff, especially if you're in the Oklahoma area, uh, I encourage you to reach out to Oki Overland. Uh, they coincidentally, I didn't tell them, uh, didn't tell them this ahead of time, but they ended up being the same as the lowest price I could find anywhere online. And they shipped it straight to my house, and I didn't have to worry about it. It was great. Uh, I got here quicker than they thought it would, quicker than they told me it would. Uh, so they're great to deal with. So if you're, and it's nice to deal with someone kind of local. So. I encourage you, if you're around this area, look out, check out Oki Overland. Um, but yeah, I know snorkels are kind of one of those weird overland things where some people hate them, some people love them. When it, for me, one, there is the whole gets the intake up higher, uh, kind of gets it out of dust. Because I do, I, I go out with people sometimes and it does get really dusty and it would be nice to have my air intake up higher. Uh, but I love water. And I love splashing through water and puddles. And I've seen more than one rig uh, have a motor just get destroyed by getting water in it. And I really don't want that to happen because I really like this thing. Uh, I've already gone and uh, raised up all the breathers, like all the differential and stuff. So I've already done those kind of modifications to get it more prepared to go in water. Uh, and then this is just kind of a final insurance thing just to make it. It's more just peace of mind. So if I'm, you know, doing a water crossing or splashing through a big puddle or something, I'm not too, uh, what, when I say puddle, I don't mean like a rain puddle on the street. I mean like a giant mud hole that I don't know how deep it is. I'm usually really good about getting out and walking water crossings and stuff like that to see how deep it is. And I'm usually pretty strict about, I've got a if, you know, certain height that I'm willing to accept, or I guess a certain depth of water I'm willing to accept if I'm going to cross it. Uh, and, and that might not change that depth I'm willing to accept may not change a whole lot with the snorkel, but I won't be as worried about it. Like I said, just more peace of mind. And finally, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I like the way they look. Uh, it just makes, it, it's like the, the finishing touch almost on an overland rig. It's one, it, I don't know, it sounds silly, but yeah, rule of cool is a thing. So there is that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and next we're going to go over, I'm going to show you all the tools we're going to be using. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be slightly different because I'm not exactly following Dobinson's directions. I'm doing things slightly different. And then uh, after that, we'll start actually drilling holes and cutting holes in the fender. And uh, yeah, this, is, uh, this will be fun. Okay, so these are all the tools that I at least anticipate using. And if I end up using something different, uh, in the future, in the video, while we're doing the install, I will uh, definitely make a comment in here somewhere, or let you know somehow. So, first thing that we're going to have is drill. Makes sense. Next up will be ratcheting wrenches. This one should be self-explanatory. Uh, it's going to be a um, an air saw. We're going to use this instead of a, uh, a big uh, like hole drill. We're going to use this instead to just cut big holes out. Hammer and center punch. To help mark our holes where we're going to drill holes for the studs to hold the uh, actual snorkel on. Screwdrivers, flathead, and Phillips. Uh, we've got some marine adhesive sealant. We're going to use this to seal up some of the holes in the original air box. A little bit of primer just to go over the uh, the holes we drill and stuff just to prevent rust. A, uh, a step bit. We're going to use this to enlarge the smaller holes that we drill for the studs to hold the snorkel to the body. And finally, we're going to use some 3M uh, vehicle... I forget, VHB, it's like it's to hold like trim and stuff on. We're going to try using this to hold the snorkel to the A-pillar instead of actually drilling holes in the A-pillar and using um, uh, pop rivets. So we're going to try this and see how it goes. And if it doesn't work, we'll go back and do pop rivets. So no worries there. And I almost forgot, we're going to use some uh, painter's tape uh, to help hold on this uh, big awesome stencil that comes with the uh, snorkel that you line up on the fender and to know where to drill all the holes and cut your holes and stuff. 
And then finally, I didn't grab it out of the car yet, but we're going to need a Sharpie to uh, mark some of the places where we're going to be cutting out the big hole for the snorkel. Okay, so step one is we have to remove the inner fender flare liner, which on mine is right here. And you might be able to see that it is, uh, it's a uh, filthy. So pro tip, uh, if you're going to do this, don't go out and play in the mud the day before you're going to do an install like this. Uh, but I'm going to go through and try to find all the little screws, like there's one right here, and get this uh, fender flare liner out. And I'll uh, bring you back as soon as I get that out. Okay, so I'm already changing. Uh, give myself a little bit more room trying to work in this uh, wheel well I might be smart and uh, I'm just going to jack the car up and take the tire off and give me a lot more room to work in that uh, wheel well area so I'm going to go do that real quick okay so you can see I've taken the wheel off to allow better access up to the uh, fender liner here in the wheel well let's make the fender liner out easier and then it'll also make it easier to reach up and uh, do the bolts on the back of the studs to actually hold the uh, snorkel itself on. And yes, and being safe, I have double checked. I got a non Harbor Freight jack stand down here and the jack is down there as well as a backup. And finally, while I was down here, always check while you're, while you're out looking and doing things. Uh, my brake pads are getting a little, uh, a little thinner than I'd like. So I need to work on getting some brake pads and do that as well. All right, All right let's move on to the next step. Okay, now that we have the fender liner mostly out of the way, giving us access to the inside of the fender, we've now removed the air box itself so we can remove the attachment from it to the, the, the air in that was in here. Uh, and now finally we have taped on the stencil for us to uh, do all the holes and the opening. For the smaller individual holes, we're going to do the, uh, the hammer and the center punch, drill a small hole, and use our step bit to open it up to 7 16 I believe. I have to double check the instructions. And then for here, uh, we're gonna have to mark this out with a Sharpie. Uh, and then that's gonna be the big opening and that's where we're gonna get the air saw out. And that should be, uh, that's gonna be the scary part. Okay, we're gonna start off by using our center punch and a hammer. And what we're gonna do is where there needs to be a hole, we're gonna put the center punch in the center of that spot Give it a good solid hit, and that's going to put a small indention in the metal. That gives our drill bit somewhere to bite into to get started so the drill bit doesn't kind of walk as it's getting ready to start drilling your hole. And then we're going to go through and do this for each of the holes. This is exceptionally nerve-wracking, doing this to a perfectly good fender. That one, we need to do this one. All right. Okay, so now for all those places we did with the, uh, the center punch, we're gonna drill a small hole. Uh, I'm not even sure what size drill bit this is, but it's small. Uh, we're gonna use the center punch hole as our guide, do this, and then we're gonna come back with our step drill bit and open that hole up to, what was it, uh, five eighths. Okay, now we're gonna switch out to our step bit and uh, drill those holes a little bit larger. All right, so now again with the uh, the step bit. Okay, so I put a little uh, painter's tape so I know how far 5 eighths is, uh, so I don't have to keep stopping and checking it. All right, so we've got our starter hole drilled, safety glasses on, air saw. Let's do this. Pray for me. Okay, quick lesson learned. One, this is way louder than I thought, uh, so I'm going to go get ear protection. And two, it cuts really quick. So, uh, yeah, I wasn't prepared for that. It goes quick. So, uh, let me get some ear protection. Let's try again. Okay, 
All right, let's try this again. My safety glasses, earplugs, uh, these little Surefire EP3s, I think is what they're called. They're little, little dobbies, but they work really good. Okay. So uh, we're going to try this again now. All right, so as you can see, we have a nice big hole here now. Uh, and before I go and clean some of the burrs up and put some primer on here to make sure it doesn't rust, we're going to go ahead and test fit the snorkel to make sure our holes worked out in the places we needed them. So this should just line up perfect and all the studs should go in the holes and we shouldn't have any problems. Let's hope. Okay. Looks like it fits perfect. Uh, and even better is it clears my ditch light, which I was really worried about. I didn't think it was going to clear that. Uh, it does just barely. This is going to look really good. Now we just need to clean these holes up, put a little primer, and then start bolting this together and connecting this to the airbox. we got a lot to do still, but it's looking really good and I'm feeling better. All right, so we've got our big holes. They're primered. They're all cleaned up. Everything's ready to go. So we're actually going to mount the um, snorkel itself. Uh, the way this is going to work is the big opening here is going to go through the big hole. we got a bunch of these little studs. They are going to go through the little holes. And then I'm going to reach in from where we took the fender liner off before and attach uh, these washers and nylon -like nuts. Uh, I'm just going to barely get them started so we've got some wiggle room. Uh, that way we have room to while we're doing the, the hose that goes to the airbox and all that. Uh, like I said, just enough to get them started so we can get it on there and attached. Okay, so next we need to get this in place. This is the hose that connects the snorkel to the airbox itself. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put, it comes with two of these uh, you know, hose clamps, a bigger one that goes on the snorkel side and a smaller one that's going to go on the, um, the airbox side. We're going to kind of set those kind of where they go and we're going to try to wrestle this into place. All right, so first we're going to go ahead and get this lined up. All right, so it kind of just jumps into place there. I'm going to try to find the easiest one to... Is that one out? This front one's pretty obvious. Yeah, okay. This is going to be tricky. Hang on. Fine, there's the stud. Okay, so it's now, that washer's taped over the, uh, the stud, held in place, so now I can reach in real easy, figure out where it was, and get the actual lock nut started. There we go. Super easy. Uh, that's a trick I recommend you try, because it makes this a lot easier. It's hard to get both hands up in there at the same time. All right, so now we get to do... Um, Almost the last part. We're going to put the snorkel head on. Uh, like I said, I did all the bolts. I uh, tightened everything up. Made sure everything's good and tight. It is solid. It is mounted to the vehicle. It's not going anywhere. So we're going to throw the snorkel head on. And I'll throw everything back together. Put the fender liner back on. Put the tire back on. And, and then uh, I think next time you join me, we'll be done. It'll be all together. All right, there we go. Now it's a snorkel. All right, so we're all done. Um, just as a kind of fun fact, uh, the Dobbinson instructions say it should take about three hours. Uh, took me closer to four and a half, but that was me stopping to film, uh, letting the primer dry that I sprayed on some of the holes to prevent rust, stuff like that. So uh, if you were motivated enough, I'm sure you could get it done in three hours. Uh, but hey, I'm very happy. You can get a quick look at it. Just in time for me to uh, go out to the Ozarks uh, next month for our rendezvous in the Ozarks. Uh, and I got some news about that. We'll be sharing it a little bit later once I know a little bit more. 
Uh, but I will definitely be there. So if you see me, come up, say hi. Let me know you uh, watch the sh watch the channel. I'd love to hear from you. Love to meet you. Um, so I don't have a whole lot else. Uh, I was going to show you about putting the snorkel on, and it's it's on. So uh, that's probably going to wrap up this episode. Um, let's see. If you're watching this on YouTube, just realize we also release the audio on uh, as a podcast. You can find it wherever good podcasts are found. Just search Storm Crow Overland. Um, this may not be the best episode for that because this was really all about showing you me doing stuff. Uh, so maybe this is a good one to watch. But if you are listening to this as a podcast, just realize we also released the video uh, on YouTube. You can find it by searching Storm Crow Overland. Uh, there's links in the description, all that fun stuff. And uh, you can also find us on Instagram at Storm Crow Overland, where I'll be posting pictures of this up as soon as I can go out and take some cool pictures. And then finally, you can shoot me an email at stormcrowoverland at gmail.com if you want. Uh, on any of those platforms, I'd really really appreciate a like, comment, follow, subscribe, message, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, let me know you're watching. Let me know what you think. Send me questions. Uh, I had a guy that sent me a question last night, and we were talking about 12-volt uh, electrical stuff from, from fridges and batteries and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, feel free. Or if you, uh, if you can't stand what I'm doing, send me a message let me know. Or anything. I don't know. It's just it's fun to get messages from people, especially people I don't actually know. Uh, and I guess... Sometimes you have to go out and get lost and, and maybe not need a snorkel, but look cool having one uh, before you can find yourself. Thanks for watching.